In the previous video, we stopped on the Welcome Screens Projects tab. But what's a project and how does it help me? What kinds of projects does PyCharm support? What about projects that need virtual environments? Well, let's take a look. Hi, I'm Paul Everett, JetBrains Developer Advocate, and welcome to our PyCharm Getting Started series. First, some abject begging. Our data shows that 80% of you haven't subscribed to our channel. If you like this video and you want to see some more content on PyCharm, click the subscribe button and keep me off the streets. In our previous video, we went through installing PyCharm in the tabs on the welcome screen. The only tab we didn't cover was the projects tab. In this video, we'll understand how to start your first project in PyCharm, what kinds of projects are available, virtual environments and project interpreters. But first we start with why PyCharm organizes your code base in a project architecture. Let's start now. We get this a lot. I've just installed the IDE. I'm looking at the welcome screen and I need to make a project. But what's a project? Why do I need it? This is a major difference between IDEs like PyCharm and text editors. So let's take a look. You might have a really big code base. PyCharm is great at analyzing all of that code and making sense of it, then making you really productive at moving around, editing, bulk refactoring, warnings about problems. Where do we put this code intelligence? In a project. But your coding isn't just editing files. You have development workflows too. Running code, debugging code, Python consoles, system terminal, test coverage, profiling, version control, databases, front is The project is your central view of all of this for your code in a consistent, quality, familiar UI. Yeah, people usually don't fire up PyCharm just to jot something down in a file. It's your work, it's your project, you're gonna spend some time in it. Now, back to where we left off on the welcome screen and the projects tab. If you've already worked on a project, the welcome screen will look a bit different to you with the list of your recent projects shown in the center, but the options will stay the same. There are three available options on this screen. First, we could get an existing project from version control, like GitHub, for example. All we would need to do here is paste a repository URL and click clone. I'm not gonna clone the repository right now, if you want to learn more about this and other version control VCS topics, please take a look at the Introduction to Git and GitHub in PyCharm video from this series. The second option we could go for is opening a project stored on our local machine. From there, navigate your local drive to find a project that you want to work on. Then select it and click Open. Again, we won't be showing that option, so I'll hit cancel. Instead, I'll go with the third option. We're going to create a new project. Now that we decided to create a new project, we can see the first difference between PyCharm Community and PyCharm Professional. If you are using PyCharm Professional, you can start taking advantage of project types. Project types are pre-configured environments that automate the project creation by setting technology-specific preferences, downloading dependencies, creating required files, etc. Because PyCharm Community is only meant for pure Python, you won't see these options on the left side. In PyCharm Professional, on the other hand, there are several technologies that you can choose from. You can also select pure Python if all you want to work on is a pure Python project, 
which is what you also get in PyCharm Community Edition. But chances are that your work requires a Python web framework or scientific tools or maybe front-end technologies. In this case, you have some options. If you are working with a Python web project, PyCharm supports popular frameworks such as Django and Flask out of the box. If working with data science is your goal, you can leverage the scientific tooling setup. It will create a Conda environment and the folder structure for you. Finally, if you want to work on your front end, PyCharm Professional also has professional support for working with JavaScript and TypeScript and its related technologies, including Angular and React. In this video, we're going to start working on a Django project. We will call it Getting Understarted. We now need to take a detour and cover something in Python that is certainly a stumbling block, virtual environments. In Python projects, it's considered a best practice to do your work in a virtual environment. Each project then acts like it has its own independent Python interpreter. If you install a package in one project, it won't mess up or interfere with another project. It's a painful part of starting a Python project. We won't go into a lot of depth about it, but it's important to know that PyCharm tries really hard to take care of this part, creating your project interpreter and activating your virtual environment. Back to the new project screen. We have a section called Python interpreter colon new virtual env environment. In our case, we're going to create a new one using virtual env, but as you can see here, PyCharm also supports pip env and conda out of the box. I already have Python 3.10 installed as my default Python. PyCharm detected it, so I click create. What happens next? PyCharm creates a new project for us, a Django project, in fact. PyCharm created and activated a virtual environment, downloaded all the required dependencies, and generated an empty Django project with configuration files and run and debug configurations and more. And the cool thing is that I can jump straight into coding now. Now, if you close this project and we go back to the PyCharm welcome screen, you'll see that the projects tab has changed slightly. Now you'll see your recent projects, and this list will grow as you have more projects. All right, in this video, we learned about projects and how to start a new project in PyCharm. For more information on working with projects in PyCharm, check out our documentation page. The links are in the description. In the next video, we're going to dive into PyCharm's UI, so you'll feel more comfortable starting your code journey right away. See you there.